So building an insect home is what we're talking about this morning. Um, and I'm really excited about it because insects are one of my favorite things to talk about. And it gave me an excuse this morning to wear one of my favorite shirts. Oh, that's such a cool shirt. I love well, it. Thank you. Oh, this is Mount Laguna? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Mount Laguna. It's at, um, I got it at the lodge there. And oh, well, cool. they've got like butterfly ones and bug ones and they change color in the sunlight. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So I have an insect home outside um, right now that I built the other day, the one here on the picture. And maybe if there's time at the end, we'll walk out and it'll change colors. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's awesome. I would love to see that. Yeah. So I, would also, uh, I was going to say, I would love to hear about what animals are your favorites, what California animals and plants, if you have any favorites. Good question. So it was really hard for me to think of my favorite plant and animal um, in San Diego or in California because there are so many. Mm -hmm. And I've only been here for a couple of years. And it seems like every single day I'm discovering something new. And I think because of the amount of biodiversity here, if I were to be here for the rest of my life, I could probably say that. Um, I picked these two though, because they have a really cool story that went along with them. So both of them were from um, Anza Borrego State Park. And my favorite animal that I picked is a bird called the Phenopepla. Um, I saw it, or I heard it before I saw it. It's got this really beautiful, kind of loud call. Um, and so I wondered what it was and it took me a little while of observing to find it. And then it really struck me. If you've ever seen one of these birds, I'd love to hear. Um, but they are just, they, they don't look like a bird that would be found in, in San Diego in my mind. So the males have this really crazy crown on their head and they're black and shiny with red eyes. Um, and the cool thing about them was I noticed that it was kind of hopping back and forth in a mesquite plant, which has all these thorns on them. And they're a really kind of rough looking plant. And within the plant, there's these giant balls of red berries. Mm -hmm. And that is the desert mistletoe, which it actually, um, it's his favorite food. So that was, it taught me two things when I saw the phenopepla. Um, have you ever seen one, Miss Lauren? I have never been lucky enough to see one in the wild. I've seen one in the, the loan program at the museum, but it was not alive, but it was so neat to get to stare at it. And like you talked about its crown, it's like, yeah, it's such a hairdo. I love it. It's such a beautiful bird. They sort of look like a cockatiel in my, in my mind, but yeah, um, different color. Or I've heard them called, um, gothic cardinals before <laughs> oh i like that i have never heard that that's that's awesome yeah and then the second one that i chose um is the california evening primrose which again i saw um last this last super bloom in the desert and the reason i picked it is not necessarily because of the plant itself but uh, when I saw it, I was leaving a hike and it looked like the desert floor was just moving and it was alive and I had no idea what was going on. So I, I ran up to whatever this was with my camera and when I got down closer, I noticed that there were thousands of these big fat caterpillars crawling across the desert floor and they weren't there when I started the hike. So this all happened oh, wow. um, afterwards, right about sunset. And I, I got out my phone, I took a picture, I had to find out what they were on INAT. So it told me that they were um, white lined sphinx moth caterpillars and their favorite food is California evening primrose. So they were fattening up and getting ready to change into moths. That's so cool. That must've been pretty amazing. Pretty yeah. surreal too, I imagine. It was awesome. So. Always excited to discover new things, but those are definitely two of my favorite um, organisms that I've seen so far. Very cool. Thanks for sharing with us. Um, I love hearing about people's favorites, especially California native favorites. So that's super cool. And I'm excited to talk to you 
um, about insects and why they're important and um, how we can help them. So a lot of people think that, you know, insects are creepy and that they're harmful and that they spite or sting, but actually insects are so important and they're so great. And I don't like to call them creepy crawlies. I like to call them cute crawlies because they really are adorable and they're also beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, this is my little baby Ewan and he was like six months old in this picture. He's got this giant Hercules beetle crawling up his leg and he's just totally okay with it. It's friendly, it's beautiful, and they're, they're great to learn from. Um, but beyond that, they provide us with food. Uh, you saw that trivia fact earlier and they're pollinators. They're also, they're also uh, cleaners. So they're decomposers and they clean up waste. Um, they not only provide us with food because of pollination, but they're also a food staple in a lot of cultures. They're a yummy treat in a lot of cultures too. So caterpillars and um, rice bugs and grasshoppers, those are all things that are commonly eaten in other cultures. Um, I know I've had some, some good grasshoppers and some cicadas too. Mm -hmm. They are also basically the building blocks of the natural world because they are the, the bottom of the food chain in a lot of places. Um, and without them, we wouldn't be able to survive. So they're found in every environment. And here in California, speaking of biodiversity, there are about 27,000 known species of insects in California, and that's just the ones that we know. So there are so many that we don't know and that are unnamed that we're discovering. And in California, we have the most insect diversity of any other state in the nation. Um, so pretty incredible. There's a lot to find, and we're going to build some homes for them today. Uh, um. So why do we want to build an insect home? Um, again, it's really important that we support them and that they have a safe place. It's a, it's a great way to create um, a safe hiding space for them to, you know, get away from lizards and birds and other predators, humans even. So the most important thing when we're building an insect home is to pick materials that are natural um, or that are going to stand up, that are going to hold up. So some of these things aren't necessarily natural, but I picked them because they're going to kind of stand the test of time. You don't really want to get things that are going to degrade really quickly. Um, and some things that you might want to build with are cardboard, sticks, toilet paper rolls. Those are recycled items that you can find in your own place, but then also go on a materials walk and get some stuff that's in your natural environment. So I went around just my neighborhood here in Chula Vista and I found some pine cones and leaves and sticks. Um, let's see what else I have. Some pine straw and in my back patio, there's a, a palm frond that had fallen. So I got a lot of leaves from there that I cut up. And um, the idea is to look for things, and this is why I go to pine cones, that have a lot of little nooks and crannies because they like to get in small spaces. Um, so when you're thinking about materials, think about stuff that's going to provide those little spaces for them to crawl into. Um, but be creative with it. So there is no real, you know, standard materials list for building an insect home. I have seen insect homes that are pal whole building pallets that are stacked on top of each other and they're higher, they're taller than me. Um, I've seen ones that are made from old bird houses and wooden drawer pulls and cinder blocks and bricks. So you can really get creative, and I'm so excited to see what you go, what you guys come up with. Um, I really would love to see if you, you know, share your photos afterwards. But it's also okay to start small. So I've seen these beautiful, intricate homes, um, but keep in mind a lot of insects are small. So it's okay if your home 
is just made from, this is a raisin container. Um, and you make a lot of little entrances and stuff inside of that. So really get as big or as small as you want. Here's one that I made the other day. Um, and I have up there just for scale on the side where there's the welcome sign. That whole section is made out of a gallon jug of water that I recycled. And then, so it's pretty large by itself. And then it's on top of some cardboard and some logs, um, recycled cans that I found and some old cracked gardening pots that I had. So I put mine in a space that's pretty well sheltered beneath the tree um, so that if it does rain, it doesn't happen very often, I know, but if and when it does, um, it's gonna stay pretty dry and that's important because you don't want it to get, you know, soggy and start to kind of degrade. Um, the things that we wanna avoid when we're building an insect home to just make sure that we're supporting them is to clean any of the materials that you're picking out. So if you've got stuff that used to have food in it or in this case, juice in it, um, definitely wash it first because you don't want it to mold, and although we want to attract attract insects, we don't necessarily want like a swarm of bees or ants all inside of it. We want a lot of different things. And then another thing is I picked out, um, these are baby food jars, and then I also have some cans, and they used to have those labels around the outside, mm. and the, there's some glue or some adhesive on the outside. And if I kept that there, it might have some insects stuck on it. So if you've got anything sticky, um, you want to remove that too, because we don't want them to get trapped. We want to support them, right? So if you don't have your materials with you today, that's fine. Um, this is just to kind of give you an idea and some inspiration so that afterwards you can go and create your own home and then share it with us, definitely. So... I created this one the other day and already I have lots of different things coming to it. Not necessarily just insects. I've got roly polies, which, do you know what those are, Miss Lauren? Anybody know? Yeah, um, sow bugs, roly, I mean, I always called them roly polies growing up and then I learned that um, when I started working at the museum that people called them like wood lice or sow bugs or, um, yeah, but I love them. They're great decomposers and they're a good sign when you have them in your garden. Things are really healthy. Yeah, and something uh, that I learned at the museum actually is that they are land crustaceans. So yeah. when you think of, you know, when you think of a roly-poly or when you think of a crustacean, you think of like a crab, a lobster or something like that. But no, roly-polies are crustaceans, which I think yeah. is fascinating. It is. And then there are like giant crustaceans in the ocean that look like roly polies, but they're huge. And those are <laughs> horrifying. They're amazing yeah. to just stare at. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with that. That's pretty, pretty <laughs> eerie of a thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've had roly polies. I've had some centipedes or millipedes. I had the first thing that I ever saw go up to it was like, 10 minutes after setting it outside and there was a cute little spider crawling up to it. So I thought, okay, I'm doing something for them. Yeah. Um, and they're in there. So today I'm just going to craft one out of this juice container and I've already pre-washed everything. If you are making one at home, um, the only thing I would say is make sure if you're, like I used a box cutter to cut the opening out here um, if you're using anything sharp like that, just ask for some assistance and, and be safe. So I've cut out an opening here, it's pre-washed. And for this one today, I'm gonna use this container, um, a raisin container. And I've got a couple of baby food jars. So right here, I've got lots of those these days. Um, some old wrapping paper that didn't get used last Christmas. And let's see what else. Um, this was some kind of sustainable packaging that I just got some pottery in. So I've got a ton of that and it's gonna kind of fill in the spaces here. And then 
let's see, pine cones. Uh, I read this that if you're using cardboard, I've already cut out some small pieces. A lot of cardboard, I don't know if you can see, it has these little holes in it um, that that's really good for them to get inside. So I'm using some of that just kind of as a space filler and I made a little welcome sign, you know, for some curb appeal. <laughs> Um, I got some leaves from that dried palm frond that's out back and I cut up some pieces there and then also some pine straw. So just to fill in the spaces. The idea is to create just all these different um, places that they can hide and get into. So the one thing that's a little bit, I kind of questioned whether to use it, but I found um, when I was doing my materials walk, I found this landscaping netting kind of on the sidewalks a lot. They're doing a um, erosion control with, with drought plants in our neighborhood. And there's just a lot of this that is kind of cut and left to, you know, blow away. And this is really bad to just have out in our natural environment because it gets caught around animals and it can, you know, wind up places that we don't want it to. So I thought it would be really cool to reuse this. And instead of using glue or anything like that to keep my um, materials inside the container, I'm going to use that as a screen around the front and then tie it on the back so that it keeps things in and it also makes some little entrances there. So Really, this is where you get to get creative and it does not have to look perfect. Um, I recommend first, you know, doing a materials walk like I did. And when you do that, I, I walked around the sidewalks and just keep in mind that, you know, people are walking their dogs out and the pine cones and things that you pick up might have, you know, been peed on by a dog or something. So either wear gloves or wash your hands after because these definitely were from the trail that I walk my dogs on every day. Um, and then get creative. So once you've got all of your stuff, I've got a whole table full here. Um, make a plan. If you, if you wanna you know, take some time and really think about it, maybe draw out a plan with what you've got and make an illustration. Why are you using the materials that you picked? Um, some other people who have done these have gone ahead and looked up specific insects that they want to attract. And then the materials that they use are to support those insects. So I'm just doing a bunch of random stuff, but you're welcome to do that also. Um, and I'm just gonna start putting stuff inside here to create those different spaces. I'm going to put, let's see, this netting in the back, board netting here, and maybe fill it with a pine cone. So there's lots of different places to go. And I already put in some rolled paper um, inside a baby food jar. Let's see, I'm going to put in a few more pine cones, if I can fit some. Oh, something also, I thought this would be an inter interesting little home, is I found a lot of these empty garden snail shells. Um, so another natural material to put in there. I found some really pretty dried sycamore leaves in the park. Sorry for the noise, they are dry. <laughs> And just while I'm putting this together, I um, have some other really cool facts about insects to share with you guys. So I shared that California has the richest diversity of insects in the nation. But when we're talking about insects in the world, there are about 900,000 known species of insects. And that's just the ones that we know. So that makes up about 80% of all organisms on planet Earth. So insects are a huge, huge part of our planet. Um, most people agree that there are more insect species that have not been discovered or have not been named 
than the ones we already have. So more than 900,000. And people think that that number is about 2 million insects that haven't yet been discovered. At any given time, so right now, there are about 10 quintillion insects alive and crawling around on this earth. That's crazy to think about. I'm not even sure that I heard that number <laughs> before. Um, in the United States, there are about 91,000 named insects, and we believe that there are about 73,000 that haven't been named yet. And then our four biggest categories of insects on this planet are beetles, making up the largest category, followed by flies, and then our next largest category are insects, bees, and wasps. And then our next is moths and butterflies. So pretty incredible. Let's see. All right, so just for some progress, again, I'm doing this really quickly. I'm sure you guys will come up with something that is more attractive than this, but let me tell you, the insects don't care. Um, maybe, maybe they do, I don't wanna speak for them, maybe they do. <laughs> Ms. Lauren, have you ever made an insect home? I did. I actually made one out of um, old bamboo that had been like really small little bamboo reeds somebody had cut up and like thrown away and just twine and just like knotted it all up and hung it up. Um, and I got a lot of spiders that way. So I was very happy. Oh, no. oh, can you hear me? I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. So it was old bamboo, you said? Old bamboo and twine and just kind of like knotting it and putting a stick in and knotting it and putting a stick in. And then I had a whole bunch of, hung it up in a tree actually in my yard oh, and I got a lot of spiders. Um, so that was neat. I was very happy to have them there. So that's a good point. I just have mindset on, um, the ground outside in a, in a spot that's going to be dry and shaded, but I have seen them more often than not hung from trees. Mm -hmm. um, and just to speak to the variety of things, you know, that I've seen people build, that is a totally different, you know, approach that I'm taking. And then I've seen ones too that are just made out of um, a lot of different food cans, and then they are put together and hung from a tree. So. It's really cool uh, what people are creating out there. I encourage you to go look because <laughs> mine doesn't compare, but what's important is that we're supporting them, right? Yes, definitely. And I think yours is beautiful. I love the welcome sign that you did on your one too. It's so cute. Yeah. So, okay. I've got mine just about full and I want to talk about what are some things that you can do afterwards. So after, set it out in a spot and observe. So observe what comes um, to your insect home over time. Observe with your eyes because we've created a space that's safe for them and you know, well, lots of different places for them to go, but we can't see everything that's in there. Oh, we got a cameo from my dog here. <laughs> um, and we don't want to be sticking our fingers in there or anything because, you know, you don't know what's there. So observe with your eyes, take some photos if you can, upload what you see to iNaturalist if you can. You can journal about what you see in there, take, you know, sketch what you see. One of my favorite things to do every day is just check mine in the morning and then at night every day to just see each day what changes even if I don't see an insect at the time, do I see evidence of one? And um, that brings me to a little show and tell I wanted to show you guys. So this is evidence of an insect that I found back there just a couple days ago. And again, didn't see it, but here's what one left behind. Can you see that? That's so cool. So I'm curious, anybody watching, um, whether you know what that is or whether you have any guesses. Can you see it okay? That's really big. Yeah, it is pretty <laughs> big. And this, by the way, it's not the insect itself. It's 
an exoskeleton. Um, so if you have any guesses. Curious. I have a guess. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> but it's hard to see, but I think it maybe is like a mantis. Yes, I it is. Oh, Here, turn cool. oh yeah, that's helpful. Here. Yeah, so you see its arms there. Arms, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I thought that was a neat find. I've never actually seen a full exoskeleton like that. Yeah, I found one of a grasshopper the other day in my yard, and it was like so pretty to just see like an all white outline of an insect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then. Something else that I found. Now, this isn't the exoskeleton, but it is um, one that had passed, but it's a beautiful, again, speaking to that beautiful, um, very beautiful insect. Mm -hmm. And that is, let's see, a 10 lined June beetle, I think. Really pretty. I yeah. love their little like antennae too. I think the males have like those giant ones. Yeah, this one, see it has one left and it's just kind of like feathery looking. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So I hope that you guys have, you know, some inspiration and have fun making some insect homes. And again, I would love to see what you came up with because I know that there are so many creative ideas out there and I love to add on to mine um, and just get some inspiration from you guys. Yeah. Definitely lots of inspiration. Here's a close up of your water bottle part. I love that you put the snail shell, the empty snail shell. I thought that was super cool <laughs> idea with the little welcome sign. Do you um, have a favorite insect, Lauren? Do you have a favorite? I'm sorry, my a dog barked. <laughs> One of them. Uh -uh. What, did, what did you ask? Do you have a favorite insect? You know, I don't because there's so many that I really really like I tend to like I tend to like beetles a lot I really like the fig beetles I think they're just hilarious the big green <laughs> ones that fly around and bump off of things um because I just feel like that's probably how I would fly if I could fly I would probably be like get out of my way yeah I'm coming through um and they're just beautiful so metallic they are. um yeah so yeah, and there's a lot out right now too. So I'm very happy with seeing all of them. I was out um, hiking a couple weekends ago and there was one that just did not want to leave my side. <laughs> they, they tend to do that. I think that I've heard that their sight is just really, really bad. Um, and yeah, they, they hit you a lot. Yeah. yeah they're friendly though. Being attacked, but they're not. They're <laughs> no. just, they just can't help themselves. That's right. <laughs> Well, thank you, Miss Ashton. That was really, really fun. Um, I hope we see some fabulous insect homes out there. People can tag us and hashtag us. Um, we want to see what you guys create. So Yeah, thank you so much. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your day and week celebrating our biodiversity. <laughs>